Reaver and Arlene here, and we are back for episode four of Welcome to the Hobby. And in this one, we are going to tackle game types. Yes. So, I'm not going to lie. The majority of this was already written out by the lovely James. Yes. Uh, but I do have some follow-up questions just about the terms of these different types of game styles. And that is fair. Okay. Yeah, we've... We, this, this one was a little kind of tricky to do because, I mean, I could literally just write this out and just word vomit everything, but... I'm going to make them slow down so we can actually understand said word vomit. But besides that, um, <laughs> this way it's also... I can still kind of word vomit, but, like, you have your questions, so... Clarif clarification. Clarification on them and all. Yes. So. All right. Uh, so, first of all, how do you find... Okay, well, uh, games are usually hosted by a group or every once in a while just an individual trying to get, you know, friends together or what, but usually there are groups within communities around the country, like within, I'll say, like, the Northeast, mm -hmm. uh, there is a regional group called UNO, which is United Nerf Ops. They have different... Uh, groups within that group, so you have, like, the So I thought that's, like, the grandfather group, and then it kind of brings yeah, itself. Yeah, because you have uh, the Connecticut uh, Nerf Ops, the New York City Nerf Ops, the New Jersey Nerf Ops, uh, so it's, like, it's all under one umbrella, but each one has, hosts their own different games. Oh, that's cool. uh, you have the contingent down in Maryland, so you have, so you have like, Southern Maryland House of Nerf. I didn't um, realize this was such a large organization. Well, well, no. Southern Maryland House of Nerf is different from okay. Uno, but like I'm just going off of that. Uh, you have a, a bunch of groups actually down in Maryland. Uh, you have some. You'll be able, to, and I mean, this is just me going off of my memory, and you know, I hate to, you know, say, but my friends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, usually most communities have like a local Nerf group, okay. or they're, or they could be even part of a larger Nerf. group. So. so how would you be able to find these groups? Uh, well, there is the World Foam Alliance. So, World Foam, World Foam Organization, is that a website, or is that social media? Uh, the World Foam Alliance is the brainchild of Captain Xavier and Al the Geek, um, along with other uh, members of the uh, community joining them, uh, Dart Sweep, Boomstick Mods, uh, but the idea of it is to actually have kind of like a centralized point so that people can sign up, put your information in, you can find groups and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's also a YouTube page <laughs> um, that hosts uh, different shows that like everyone does. And it's just a way for like the community to like really come together in one central hub rather than the 95 different uh, yeah, trying, Facebook trying pages and Discord servers and all of that. So, As someone who plays Pokemon Go, I understand that struggle. Yes. Trying to find local teams can be rough. So it's good yes. to know that they so. just have a centralized website that you can go to to register and find yep. your local communities. Yep, and that is a good way to do it. And also, again, Facebook, Discord. Like I said, there's tons of groups out there. Some of them have their own individual ones. Some of them are under... Um, a big, I would say, not overarching thing, but like, it, it kind of like it's a, also a hub, like uh, on the the Nerf uh, Discord channel, which is which is Walcom's channel, but a lot of community members do flock under it. So okay. you know, nice. so, yeah. excellent. So that's how you find all these lovely different uh, groups that you can join to get to play different games and be different events. Mm -hmm. um, so then I guess it's time to go to, so what is the actual styles of gameplay when you sign up for these events? Okay, well, for the overall simplification of it, it's tag. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. Whether it's free, whether it's free for all or team-based, one way or another, it's tagging, because you're tagging people with darts. Um, the mo but the game types are where it usually will vary, and some clubs may have different 
terminologies for you know how things are played, but the overarching um, play style is usually what is referred to as a 315, which is you have three lives and 15 second respawns. Once you hit your third life, you're out. And that could be a free, uh, you know, free for all, or it could be a, um, a team base. Okay. And a lot of team base uh, things usually go off of that as well. So. All right. So that sounds. I like that. It's just tag. Those are games. Yeah. That's a game I've played since I was two. It, it's a so. game we've all played since <laughs> we were two. So, the, uh, so I guess my main question when it comes to the spawns, I, I've played paintball in the past, and mm. that you know when you get hit. Yeah. The foam dart, you don't always know when you get hit. No, you don't always know when you get hit. Um, so what's the, is it just an honor policy there, or what's um, the, well, what the standards, you, uh, standards of practice, if well, you will? Well, when you're playing uh, competition and high FPS games, you tend to know more often or not when you get hit or not. Okay. The low, the low state, the low power games, though, yes. That's it, why it's important to have a high, that's a good point. This is why you want a high-powered gun, or a high-powered blaster, sorry, uh, so that you, your opponent will know if they have been hit with a dart. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's a, something I did not consider. It's yeah, fair point. it's true. <laughs> uh, for the most part, though, it, we do play on honor. Like, if you tag somebody and they don't call their hit, you tag them again, they don't call their hit, you let them know and be like, dude, I got you like three times. The honorable thing to do, whether or not you believe it or not, just take the hit. Just be like, okay, sorry, my bad, hand goes up, walk to your spawn. Okay. Um, if, and, and I mean, hits can literally go anywhere. Um, a lot of the times we do take uh, blaster tags as a, as a, as a, as a tap, so... If you have, like, you know, this four-foot monstrosity, and the tip of it gets shot, that counts as a hit to you. Uh -huh. so, Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So, and it could be anything. You can get shot in the foot, it counts as a tag. You get beamed off the forehead, it will count as a tag. Yeah. You get shot in the shoulder, it counts as a full tag, you know. So it really is the anywhere. Pou There's the no pouch on your side gets shot three or four times, you know, and somebody has to scream it to you, Griever, take your hit, and just go... Where? Your pouch. Oh, sorry. <laughs> How else would you know? Exactly. Uh, so I, it's happened to me before, and you, you just take the hit, because remember, you're there for fun. So, so from the other side of that honor system, mm -hmm. someone keeps calling you out, and you think that they might be lying. Then at that point, you go to, you would take it to whoever's hosting the event. Okay. Just be like, look, this guy keeps calling, you know, this person keeps saying they're tagging me. I have not felt one shot from that person. You take it to the host. Okay. You don't don't make a scene unless it's caused. Okay. You know, you you again. We're there for fun. We the majority of us are adults playing with toys in parks. <laughs> yes. It's it's yes. We all get competitive. It's not that serious. If you're really getting annoyed at somebody, go talk to the host, all right? Because the last thing you want to do is cause a fight and then ruin everyone's day. Yeah, that's the last thing you want to do. Don't start drama. Yes. Just handle it through the appropriate diplomatic chain of command. Exactly. That's the only way I can think of to, to wording that. But, yeah, just keep it light, keep it fun. It's it's a game at the end of the day. I, I know for me, I can sometimes get a little overcompetitive. Mm-hmm. So, but call people out, but like nicely, one to one, not yeah. you know, and causing a whole big scene and, and making and say, ruining the day for everyone. You yeah. don't want to. And I have to say, for the most part, people usually take their hits. Oh, good. It's very rare you get that one person who doesn't want to. All right, I like that a lot. Okay, so before I go into, so that's the standard kind of gameplay with the the three fifteen rule. Yeah. Um, before we go into the other different kinds, so. My thought, every year when you make all of your gajillion darts. <laughs> well, not anymore, but <laughs> what I used to. What's the cleanup process at these events? <laughs> that, so, that's something I've always wondered. Like, do you get to yes. take the darts back home with you? Or well, 
what it, because obviously, especially if you're doing this in a space, whether that you've rented yeah. or that you've asked permission well, for, or even a public park, I assume respects the environment and things yeah. like where, that. But where, what's the, the protocol? Wherever you play, always clean up for yourself because yeah. if not, then you know, wherever you're at is going to take notice and going to get mad. Yeah. Uh, usually, every like two, three rounds, you do a dart sweep. Okay. Um, where you go around, you pick up. I was about to say, I know you're not waiting till the end because no. that's chaos. Oh, that'd be just pure chaos. <laughs> um, but yeah, every like two, three rounds, depending on how heavy you think it's like going. Yeah. Um, every like two, three rounds, you do a dart sweep. You go across the field, pick up as much as you can. Uh, if you know it's yours, you pocket it. Uh, if it's not yours, we tend to usually have a community pile where you just okay. dump the darts at. And then you can go and pick out either your darts or some people will just go grab a handful, throw them in their bag. Um, I always play with the mindset of, I'm not coming home with darts. I'm just coming home with whatever I have left. Gotcha. So if I'm playing, whatever darts I fire then become the communities. Okay. So, um, I mean, I still do the dart sweeps, obviously. Of course. But like even, but especially like nowadays with uh, the advent of the commercially available half darts, you don't have like your signature make on it. So, so it's hard to, decide, to decipher which ones. Are yeah, and I mean like you could sit there and put like a mark on every single one of your darts, which I have done in the past. But it got to the point of where I'm like, I'm not sitting here for ten minutes going through. A pile of darts trying to find like you know the 15 or 20 i might get back out of it so yeah that's why i just that's how i play now okay good to know so. uh, that's something i've always wondered yeah that good to know yeah. that it, at least it is a community hey everyone picks up everybody's it's not like trying to find your yeah own and that's and that's mind. regardless of where you are if you're in a public park definitely do that if yeah. you're in a private field still do that because the owner of that field will have to still, you know, it's like make you, sure it's you want them to, to allow you guys to come back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Thank you for answering that question. Sure. That's been burning through my brain for years. <laughs> um, so, good to know. All right. So then, now we can actually go into the different styles of gaming. So, I know yeah. there's three in particular you mentioned to me in the past. I yes. believe we covered them a little bit in episode one. Mm -hmm. But let's go into a little bit more detail. So, what, what are the, how do you start, what okay. are the three main types? Okay, so, uh, well, not so much three main, but, like, usually the, the way they'll go besides the 315, um, you'll have, uh, like, Challenger, you know, a goal-based game, like okay. uh, Carpe Diem. That is one where two teams, uh, usually, usually Carpe is played with infinite lives, but you still have a respawn like if you're tagged you still have your 10 or 15 second respawn whatever it's set at um but it's a timed game at that point so it's like five minutes three minutes seven minutes however long you know the host decides it and the idea is there are some kind of object usually like kind of uh usually balls um kind of like play pit balls okay spread out so throughout the field old dodge ball I assume with the No, shirt. no, these are like, because you have to hold them like. Ah, okay, all right. No, like literally like the ones, like McDonald's play pit. Ah, okay. So, uh, we spread those throughout the field. Usually like a cluster is usually in the middle uh, where we kind of almost start off at. And each team will have a bucket. Goal is get as many balls into your bucket as possible. At the end, most wins. So. Easy enough. Yeah. Uh, then, you know, we have like, uh, King of the Hill game styles, like well, one we usually play at APOC, which is a version of King of the Hill. Um, I forget the actual name of it, I apologize. Uh, but it's basically one team will start in like a centralized area, and since APOC is now in a paintball field, we have like a little town. Ah, very nice. So it's basically you're trying to hold the town, the other team has to take it. So you have. So capture the flag kind of situation? Almost, yeah, it's almost okay. like kind of a capture the flag. Uh, capture the flag, king of the hill, that, you know, can be interchangeable. Okay. Um, so with these... But the only the only difference is with capture the flag, obviously, you get the flag and bring it back to your base. Mm -hmm. King of the hill, it's you have to eliminate the team that's holding the position. Got it. Okay. Uh, so when it comes to, I guess, 
go, kind of going back to the Carpe Diem where you're trying to move these particular objects. Right. What's the standard you get out? Do you have to return it back to its original spot? No, it's what in in something like Carpe when there's a object objective, and it also plays the same with uh, capture the flag. Okay. Uh, usually, once you have an object, you don't usually are not allowed to use your blaster. Okay. So it kind of it, it's almost it's almost like going back to um, uh, like Rift Ball in uh, Halo in the days of Halo. It's like once you have okay. the skull in your hand, you don't have your weapon. So once you have the object in your hand, you don't get to shoot. You just have to run. If you are tagged, it drops where it is. You can't just like you know like oh I'm tagged and like lob it thirty feet. No, that doesn't work. Okay. It's uh, usually you drop it where where it stands, and then another teammate has to come and get it. Like, you can't even pass it off to a teammate. It has to hit the ground. Got it. So, can you take more than one object at a time? Like, can you take a whole handful? Um, like, like, whole armful? Like, bushel? <laughs> we've had, actually, when when I first started playing Carpe, it was basically you could, if you had the, if you had a, you had to hold it. Mm -hmm. So, if you had a free hand, you could grab two. We have, it the best thing is if you're not gonna have your, yeah, you're it, not be able to use your blaster. It's, it's I'd be evolved like, over time. I, I would get like a hoodie, stuff them all in there. <laughs> yeah, no. Over time, it's evolved to you get one. Okay. So I mean, like you can like. <laughs> Sorry, there are people like me that try to be a little bit more efficient. No, and back. and and that's fair, <laughs> and that's how it used to be played. Okay. But then things got too one-sided. Usually, it was like, yeah. oh. You know, blue team has three, uh, red team has, like, 30. Yep. It's like... But that's how you win! Just... Anyways, <laughs> but, okay, so good to know. That's yes. why I wanted to ask the question, because I'm like, is that against the rules? No, uh, but just to add on to it with Carpe, yes. um, if you are brave enough to go to your opponent's uh, bucket location, you can steal out of their buckets. Oh, Good luck making that run, though. Oh, it's been done. You know, no, no it's, been, it's been done plenty of times. <laughs> the bravery. Yes. I, I, I commend it, for it, sure. It's, it's usually the small, quick ones that do that. <laughs> we blend. Oh, yeah, that's actually what good... So, is there, like... A, I can probably ask this later, but might as well ask it now. It comes to mind. Is there, like, a uniform involved? Like, can we wear camouflage? Um, Are there any limitations specifically? There are there are no specific uniforms. Um, I mean, people have can basically really wear whatever. Okay. Um, you know, obviously within reason. As I always say, function over fashion. Yes. I would assume. Uh, but you want to be able to run and not overheat. And yes. All yes. That, you all also that good you stuff. also don't want to make um, you know any you don't want to cause indecency or anything like that. Yeah. But yeah, you can pretty much wear whatever like. My go-to is usually my shorts, a sleeveless shirt, my baseball jersey, mm -hmm. and a bandana, and then obviously my eye pro. Okay. But yeah, and then like I'll like throw stuff on my belt to just like kind of aid it. But yeah, that's basically what I wear. I know guys who will wear you know chest rigs. Um, Uno has like their own shirt. Um, okay. My my buddy Jeff and Team A in Canada. They have their own shirts. <laughs> team A? Yeah, Team A. The love the joke. Uh, I love I'm, it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I misspoke. It's the A team. <laughs> the, still, fantastic. <laughs> quality. Quality naming. Yes. I appreciate it. <laughs> yes. So we are also international as well. <laughs> I love such a fun, It sounds like such a fun-loving community. Oh, it is. It can, it, well, it can be at times. Um, but yeah, like they have their own, like, you know, dry wake, like, you know, play shirts, um, you know, this year at APOC, we had two guys that were in basically full camo. Yeah. They had pants, check, they had ghillie suits. We did, we did, um. But they went ham. Oh, they went full ham, but it was great because <laughs> when we did one of the game types. Yeah. Um, I think, I think it may have been, um, I, I think it might, might have been, uh, King of the Hill. One of them literally just, because. We actually, stupidly, we put both of them on the same team. Oh, no. Okay. One of them hid in a bush 
We did not find him. Like, literally. See, that's what you kind of <laughs> do, though. I love that. I yeah. absolutely love that. Yeah, so we could not find him for, like, like for quite some time. It was just like, all right, Solid. you know. It's like, all right, you're not playing. You're just hiding. You know, game's over. Come on out. And we just saw him pop up. I'm like, what the? <laughs> okay, so that reminds me a lot of when you used to play tag back in the day and someone was babysitting the jail or whatever. Yeah. So you're not allowed to, like, babysit or, like, hide, really. Yeah. Like, you need to actively play the game. Like, I think for me growing up, it's like you had, like, a 30-second rule. You could only stay in one spot for 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. So is that, do they have similar rules like it, that, or? Again, I think that it all depends on who's hosting. Okay. Like, we didn't, re- like, honestly. So check with your local host. Yes. For honest, any I mean, truthfully, I don't think any of us really had, would have thought of that. It's like, oh, yeah, it's going to be hard to see because, like, you know, you crash it. We didn't think they would just, like, literally just, like, camp and hide and just be like, what? Yeah, I love that. That would be neat. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that so but much. That actually, but <laughs> actually, speaking of that, that actually reminded me of uh, something uh, my friend Langley used to do uh, when he hosted APOC back in the day. Uh, there was another game type he used to play called Wingman. Okay. And I'm sure there are other names for it as well, but it was basically you had pistols. Pistols could have magazines or whatever, but it had to be classified as a pistol. Okay. Um, and it was teams of two. So it was you and your partner, and it was almost a version of freeze tag. Like, if both of you were hit, your your team is out. But if one of you is hit, you just take a knee. Okay. And then the other person can bring you back. The one rule was you could not stand arm in arm with your partner and just do this. And that's exactly how Phil used to explain it. That's genius, though. It is, but that was also like, come on. I get it. I get it. Yeah, get creative. Yeah. But, yeah, get creative, but obviously if you get called out on it. Just yeah. just take the win, like, yes, I beat the system, and now they made a new rule just because of me. Take pride in that. But... Yeah, go, go with that. <laughs> If you if you try something like that and you get called out on it, just think of it like think of it more as a. I just had a rule created because of my genius, not honor. not a how dare they restrict me on play, on how I want to play. Yes, take <laughs> take that as an honor. Like, see, I taught everyone. Exactly. <laughs> they their their system was flawed, and I fixed it. I there love that. I love that. Yeah. All right, <laughs> all right. On to other gameplays. Mm-hmm. So I know we've talked about. Juggernaut or Jedi. Before. Yes. Yeah, we did. I think we did touch about about that in uh, episode one. But yeah, the idea behind that is again, it's usually like a three fifteen game. Usually, usually they'll also. But the the fun thing with that is, with a Juggernaut or Jedi, it's not so much a specific game type. It's more of like a added challenge. Okay. So like. It, you can you could be playing Carpe and put into effect a Jedi rule. Okay. So Got it. this way, what this way you can have like a Jedi basically kind of almost clear a path to the other person's buckets. If they're not tagged, then there you go. Okay. But usually you also have to mention it beforehand, just so if somebody wants to prepare for a Jedi, like getting a throwable or mega darts or something like that, you gotta at least you know give them that option. I, I was about to say so when. I assume the itinerary for an event is given out beforehand by the host. Or it playing do... it by ear, whichever. Okay. Usually say... they'll mention, like, usually it will be, like, a, uh, there will be game types with, like, a Jedi or a Juggernaut, uh, you know, something like that. So this way you know, okay, I have to bring, like, a throwable or sock bomb. Yeah. I need to get something. That, that was that exactly kind of going to be my question, was how do you, like, would the host provide those specialty ammos or specialty weapons? Um, do you need to bring those beforehand? Because I know for you, when you you have quite the collection of blasters yes. and all things ammo, so I, I guess it's and I know you take quite a bit of time beforehand choosing what's going with you and what's not. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, usually I kind of prepare for everything. Like I'll this past year at APOC, I kind I did try and limit myself on things, but I will usually bring something that will if I don't know a hundred percent of what's getting played. I'll tend to bring at least, like, one of everything. Okay. Like, when, for, uh, what was it, uh, End War, 
I had my Strifle, which has the Underslung uh, Magnus, so I had regular darts and um, Mega Darts with that, so to take care of any specialties. And just, well, honestly, kind of for uh, shits and giggles, but uh, just also for the, to have it in case it did do something different or just for the fun of it, um, I also had my Saturn with me, so I had Rival Ammo with me as well. So I was, like, covered on three fronts. Gotcha. But so going through those specialty moments, we didn't actually say what a Juggernaut or Jedi play is. Okay. So, so uh, Juggernaut is usually someone, usually with, a uh, Juggernaut is usually someone with a heavy weapon, um, usually something along the lines of, like, a Prometheus or a Vulcan, um, something that can, something, like, big and heavy. Okay. Um, usually, uh, another factor is they'll usually, like, be, decked out usually in like gear so they'll have like maybe a helmet and face mask and like a chest so, rig. So they will be very well identifiable as yes. the Juggernaut or Jedi. Yes. Um, usually the way Juggernaut plays it's very, it's from my understanding it's similar to a Jedi where normal darts won't stop them you have to hit them with like a specialty item like a throwable or mega darts um, or even mega XL darts. Okay. Um, Jedis are they don't have blasters, they usually just have a buffer. So, like, kind of like, a, basically a foam sword. Okay. A um, melee weapon. Yes, a melee weapon. And again, normal darts will not harm them. Uh, they can uh, they can only be taken down usually by mega darts or by throwables, but they also have the added advantage of you can actually deflect with the sword. So, the, so your melee weapon does not count as a tag if it's hit. Okay. So, yeah, so if, like, you throw something and they block it with the sword, that doesn't count. You have to hit the Jedi. Very good to know. Okay. I like yes. that a lot. That, that's, such a, that's such a very cool added additional, hey, we're going to change this up a little bit. Yeah, that's exactly. quite a variation in all these games. My yeah. goodness. I love that. All right. So, going over that, and then the last one that, again, we also mentioned in episode one was mm. humans versus zombies. Yes. Which I guess is a completely different type of gameplay. So, like you said, you could use Juggernaut and Jedi with Carpe Diem or with the standard right. 15 rule. Humans versus zombies is... It, that's a whole different, whole different animal. Thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole different It's a whole different ball game. Yeah. Uh, humans versus zombies is usually games that are played over the full course of a day. Like, it, from beginning to end, it's just technically one game. Oh, there are different stages to it. Okay. Um, but usually what it will be is you start off with a group of players as the zombies. Then you have everyone else as the humans. The whole goal is to either make it to the final objective and complete it, or for the, for, for the humans, mm -hmm. and for the zombies is basically turn everyone into the horde. Yes. Um, as zombies do. Yes. Kind of their only thing. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the way that will work is... They're a cult. They are. They're a cult. They are. <laughs> what do we want? Brains. When do we want them? Brains. I love that. <laughs> that that was the call of the zombies in, at uh, at War 2022. Fantastic. <laughs> Perfect. But yeah. Um, so the, what are the different types of missions that well, the humans are then trying to? Well, therein lies the fun part of humans versus zombies. You never know. Because. <laughs> The way it will work is you have, you're given a goal, a certain goal to complete, you know, set objective within like an hour, an hour and a half or something like mm -hmm. that, um, all while avoiding the horde. Uh, the objective can be anything, like, again, going off of my only experience with uh, End War 2022, the first mission we did was we had to find five... Um, five NPCs to get a card clicked in order to get onto an escape craft. Ah, oh, that's it, really it, cool. It, it was, it was sci-fi themed. So, yeah, so it was, we had to do that. Um, the original rule was if you didn't make it to the spacecraft, it turns into a zombie. But it was, that's that's a whole different thing. If you want to know what happened at End War 2022, go watch my video for that. Um, but, but without very, getting into I the like details that of that. Twist. Yeah, and then, like, the next objective would be um, okay, this group has to go complete 
has to go fix this uh, water purifier and then go fix this air filter and, you know, this relay station. Okay. And then once that's done, you know, so on and so on. Um, I've seen games where it's like a little bit more like, you know, terrestrial based, where it's very similar to something like from um, Left 4 Dead or, um, or Rod, COD Zombies, like where you have to get where you have to do certain things in order to progress to the next stage. Yeah. Um, like the standard, I guess, video gameplay where you're collecting items or yeah. it's just make it from point A to point B, save this one person. Yeah, right. Like, go meet go meet this NPC. This NPC will tell you to do something. That Then that NPC will get you to the safe room or whatever. Got it. So, and, I mean, that's like the fun of Humans vs. Zombies is it's, you know, all the missions can vary on it. And then you'll also have, like, certain missions where they'll say, all right, you can only use, like, um, you know, single-shot pistols on it or, you know, only small small pistol uh, oh, okay. weapons. So, again, uh, you bring have, up variety. Yeah. <laughs> or or, they can, or uh, if the humans are doing too well, you can always uh, limit and be like, okay, you can only carry, like, 60 darts on you. Interesting. So, in, in that same kind of breadth of if the humans are doing too well... How can you kill the zombies? Well, the zombies, again, their whole objective is to actually tag people. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have blasters. But then there are specialty zombies. Like, there are zombies with, like, pool noodle arms. So if the pool noodle hits you, you're, you're out. Um, I would have too much fun with that. Too much that, fun. <laughs> uh, you know, there, and again, I'll, this is a bit derived from... Uh, you know, Left 4 Dead, but there's, like, the spitter, so you have a, a foam ball, like, kind of, mm -hmm. kind of like the kickball or soccer balls that we yeah. used to have in school. You could throw that into a crowd. If it hits anybody, that human is now stunned, making it easier for the zombies to get them. They also have tanks, which is, which is basically a zombie version of the Juggernaut, where if you shoot a tank, it doesn't despawn, it just stuns okay. for, like, 10, 15 seconds, and then from where it was, keeps moving. Got it. So. So how, so if a regular zombie, not those specialty zombies, they get shot, they just are stunned for a few seconds, or? Um, the only one, the, the only one I know of is the tank. The tank, okay. the tank is basically immortal. Okay. Um, if a spitter is shot, then they're considered like a normal zombie. They have to despawn, wait the two, five, whatever minutes. Oh, okay. In order to come back into the game. Okay, so they do have a respawn yes. kind of a timer. Okay. Yes, but then, you know, once they put down their spitter ball, they can pass it off to, like, whoever. Like, it's not it's not like Carpe where they have to drop it where it is. They can just give it to somebody, and then somebody else can just lob it. Oh, okay. So. All right. Yeah, because obviously the main issue with most zombie-related things is how do you kill the goddamn zombies? Yes. So... Yeah, most, um, most them, normal zombies... Yeah, most normal zombies are... You shoot them once, and they're done. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe later on in the game, uh, depending on, again, how they're doing, uh, it may take two or three shots to get a zombie. Okay. Um, you know, it, it, it all depends on how, like, it, again, it all depends on how the game goes and all that stuff, because... I was about to say, because, like, I mean, the, the humans, they have, you know, range weapons, whereas if the zombies have to tag you, I feel like it's very difficult for the zombies to win at that point. Well, I mean, that's the whole thing. I, well, there in lies the whole point of the zombies is you want to build a horde because the bigger yes. the horde, the heart, yeah. no matter what, numbers usually tend to win things. Okay. You know, and also the zombies, the zombies, much like the humans where they get their objectives, the zombies have their own little world that they kind of work in. So they start working out strategies of like, oh, the humans have to get here. We can pincer them here and get, you know, and try, start so, taking so them out. So they are, into, not, they can't just be fast zombies, they're also smart zombies. Yes. Because yeah. <laughs> I always want, I go a little bit too far. I'm like, they're going to walk slow. They're going to, it's like, nope, nope, nope they're nope, going to go full nope, on. This, Got it. Nope, they're going to be the this, difficult zombies. This is, this is 2004's Dawn of the Dead Zombies. Got it. Love it. Actually give it a challenge. Yes. <laughs> All right, perfect. Um, I think that was really it. At least for all of the notes that you originally had provided me with. And I think, and honestly, I think this has been a good overall arc of, like, you know, not just, like, the different game types, but, like, you know, kind of what what we do at the events and stuff like yeah. that. But so. it sounds very, it obviously depends on the group, depends yeah. on the host, 
depends on obviously the location as well. Yeah. Um, but it sounds very versatile. Yeah. Very well, versatile. The one thing we did not touch upon: yes. uh, competitive. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, so I mean, competitive is still kind of a new thing that's like slowly. Well, I mean, not new, but like really starting to make it, its way back into the community of itself. Um, again, those are events. Excuse me. Those are events hosted by you know local groups or sometimes sponsored. But usually, it, usually from what I have seen, they've been five on five um, confrontations, and it's always like one sh one shot elimination. Like there's no like three fifteen rules on it or whatever. It's it's straight up competitive. Yeah, it's team of five, team of five, go. First one's eliminated. I assume, do you need to work up to get into a competitive league? Like, um, like you would for like any kind of sport, you have to try out. Not, kind of deal, I mean, right? not like necessarily. You it's, you can, I mean, if there, if there is a local team and you'd be like, hey, I'm interested in doing this, they may have a tryout for you or not, but usually most teams are kind of like, hey, you want to do this? Sure. All right, let's do it. Oh, and okay. they'll do practices and stuff like that. Like they'll have like, I mean, I've never really been to one, but, you know, they do, they'll they have, like, practice matches and scrimmages and all that kind of stuff. Like, they'll they'll make it actually competitive. So. I, I imagine um, for all the Star Wars fans out there, if you watch, like, Bad Batch or mm -hmm. Clone Wars when they're doing the training facilities and, you know, figuring out all the different formations and stuff like that, that yeah. that's what, kind of what I picture. Yeah, like, you'll figure, yeah, like, in, like, like with any team squad, you'll know, all right, who's fast and quick, okay? You're gonna be our you're gonna be our runner. You just get a pistol because it's gonna be the easiest thing to do. Who's the slowest? All right, you get the high powered range thing and start picking people off. There you so. go. So, but I like that. You, so you can add strategy into yeah. it as well. This is such a fun hobby. Thank you so much. It is. There's a, there's a lot to this community. There really is. And it seems like a very fun one and mm -hmm. just very kind and open. Yes. Which again, for the most part. It, there's always a few bad apples. So that's going to be it for this episode, and as always, if you enjoy the stuff me and Arlene do, please give us a like and subscribe, uh, leave us a comment down below, and just let us know what you like to enjoy in the hobby, or if you are new to the hobby, what have we maybe piqued your interest in? Let us know. We love reading them all, and ooh, don't forget to click that little bell icon, otherwise you may not know when we're doing our silliness here on the channel. Mm. And we also do have a PO box, so if you want to send us some snail mail, it's always nice. Uh, but again, thank you for joining us. We will see you guys next time. Bye. Later.